How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. It is a cold one this morning and I've got a no heat call. So I'm gonna go out there and see what I can find. Let's do some work. This video is sponsored by Free to Grow, the home service choice for AI voice. Never miss a sales call again with AI voice scheduling, customizable scripting, advanced after hours, and seamless CRM integration with the top tier companies like Service Titan, Field Pulse, House Call Pro, and Jobber to name a few. It's trusted by over 100,000 callers. Free to Grow is the choice for an AI powered voice answering solution to elevate your business communications. Click the link in the description for more details. Thank you, Free to Grow, for sponsoring this video. After greeting the customer and getting all the information that I need from them, I go to the thermostat and make sure that the emergency heat is calling because while I'm inside the house, I wanna make sure everything is working and looking good inside before I go out. So this is a zone system. I wanna make sure everything is calling properly. Both thermostats are turned on. Electric heat is 10 kW, so we should be pulling around 40 amps. And it looks like that's what we got. So the electric heat is working properly. So now it's time to go outside and see what's going on. Now, so right away, because this unit is short cycling, my mind is thinking that it's possibly low in refrigerant. So the first thing I wanna do is pop the panel off and check for any type of rub outs. So I'm looking for uh, bare, you know, copper to copper, you know, rub outs or any residual oil, any kind of signs telling me that there's a possible leak in this area. And on these train units, it's pretty common to have some rub outs. So I'm just giving a good visual, taking some time before I even gauge up just to see if anything pops out right away. Now what I like to do when I think the system is low on refrigerant is just add a little bit of refrigerant to the system and see how it responds. Is the head pressure coming up where I think it should be or is it doing something completely different? So what I like to do is go ahead and weigh the tank. That way I know how much I put in. So if I do need to take some out, I know exactly how much to take out and get me back to where I was before. Is this the best way of doing things? Maybe not but it's the way I do it and it works out pretty good for me.
Now, one thing I failed to show you here, when you're diagnosing a possible faulty TXV, what you wanna do is remove that sensing bulb. Either hold it in your hand or put it in a warm glass of water and check your pressures. See if the valve starts to open. And then vice versa, you can put it in a cold glass of water and see if the valve closes down while watching your pressures. And that'll let you know if the valve is actually working properly or not. All right, so I thought the unit was gonna be low on refrigerant at first, um, but because the unit kept shutting on and off so quickly, it was really kind of hard to diagnose if it was a low refrigerant uh, problem or not. So that's why I added a little bit of refrigerant just to see what would happen. Uh, and then I held the contactor in so that way the low pressure switch wouldn't just shut the unit off. And I was wanting to watch the head pressure in comparison to the suction, the low side. And um, obviously if you have a low refrigerant uh, situation, you're gonna have low head pressure and low suction. But in this case, the head pressure was actually rising and the suction pressure was going down really low. And then <clears throat> the exit or the, the um, coming out of that TXV, the outdoor TXV, was freezing up so um, I checked the temperature a drop across that filter that's in the unit and uh, that was good no problems there so I'm gonna call this one a faulty outdoor TXV so I gotta get availability and all of that and figure out when I can come back out here because it's not gonna be today um, but I'll definitely keep you along for the ride when I do come out I'll film that just as well and uh probably what i'll do the system is 11 years old i'll uh remove all the refrigerant from the entire system condenser uh you know line set indoor unit everything completely remove it and then um that way i can pressure test the entire system i want to make sure this system is completely leak free because it is 11 years old and then secondly the line set on this one is pretty easy to measure going up to the air handler. So that's gonna be easy for me to figure out what the factory charge, uh, if the factory charge is even good enough for this uh, length, or if I have to add or you know whatever the case is, I'll know exactly what the charge is. And uh, that way the charge will be perfect. Of course, we'll you know check the superheat, subcool and all of that, but it's always good to be able to uh, measure the line set if all possible and read the you know the manual and then weigh in the exact amount that it calls for so be able to do that do it so that's what i'm going to do on this one so yeah i'll just get availability on the txv get a new filter dryer and then that indoor unit was had quite a few air leaks uh, there was some missing screws and on that type of air handler they had the proprietary type of screws so I'm gonna grab some of those and then I'm just gonna do a good job at sealing that air handler just to make sure there's no air leaks. So, and of course we'll just go through it, uh, make sure everything else looks good, duct work wise, that sort of thing. So, but that's gonna complete today's video. I hope you you got something out of the process of troubleshooting this the way I do it. Let me know in the comment section below if uh, you would do something differently because I'm always open to learning new ways. That's just the process that, that I take. Doesn't mean that it's right for everyone, but um, it works for me. So anyway, let me know what you would have done differently in this situation, troubleshooting wise. And then uh, I'd love to hear your, you know, your comments on that. But until next time, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.